Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm so excited because we have a very special guest today. His name is Frank Rizzo and he is an amazing gentleman and he is an investor. He is an entrepreneur. He does a lot of different things that have to do in the business industry. And today he wants to talk about mindset and about exploring different values and how we can enhance ourselves and become a better, stronger, more successful person. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Wellness Expo. They're going to be in Livingston, New Jersey, and they have over 100 exhibitors there, and they're still looking for more exhibitors. They're going to have different professionals there, different coaches, different technologies, and they're going to be giving away free products. Everything will be in the description. So if you want to contact them, if you want to be a part of it, or you just want to go there and see what's going on, everything will be in the description, and I hope you enjoy it if you go. And I'll be there. So hey, look for me. All righty. So Frank, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. So tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, thank you very much for that warm introduction, Stacey. I'm, we're, I'm super uh, honored to be a, a guest on your podcast. Uh, my name is Frank Rizzo. I am a real estate entrepreneur. I've been involved in the real estate business for over 20 years now. I own a brokerage company in New York, but but really um, for the last 10 years, we've been focused in the manufactured housing space and where we, my partner and I, have focused on turning trailer parks into real affordable manufactured housing communities and being part of that process, turning those communities around, those the, that, that ecosystem around for the residents and making it a place where people uh, love to live. I mean, yeah. you know, our, our model has always been that when we walk in there, we want to make communities better. Yeah. And we believe that that's been a driving force and some of the value that we've been able to create for our, you know, our residents, our customers and, and our stakeholders as well. Um, and it, and for us, I mean, that's really started with how we go about and, and, and kind of look at the business and look at what we're trying to do to, uh, you know, kind of stay motivated through some of the challenges you face in in, in your business experience. You know, I, I find that with business, it, you know, a lot of people get so caught up in so many different things. You know, you have people like doing so many things at once. And when you're so preoccupied, either there, there's several things that happen. One, you're just trying to hold on to too many hats at once and then the hats stop dropping. Or two, you're just focused and you're not really looking at the future. You're more stuck in the past than you are the future because the world is evolving. The world is changing. People's needs are changing. And when people's needs are changing, business has to change. Your mindset has to change. And then you have people that are just like getting so stressed out, especially since COVID, that they're in a sense, they are so, so sick of their position, their job, their, their business, and they're kind of giving up on it on the inside, even though they have something really great right in front of them, their mentality, their mindset is off because they're burnt out, you know? So I know that you have a lot of different things that you were talking mm -hmm. about beforehand, and you were talking about the power of the mindset and how it could really change you and change your business. Like, what are some things that you feel that you see in the business world right now in your industry and about, you know, different things that are going on and how you could actually change things for the better? Well, you, you hit on a lot of great points right there. And I think the the, the, main, the first thing that you, you mentioned was, you know, wearing all these different hats, which, which leads to the burnout. And right? yeah. especially when you're, you know, starting out in business, you, you, you have to do a lot of different things, right? You have to be the admin, you have to be the, the, the face, the ambassador of the brand, you have to be yeah. the salesperson, you have to be the operations and, you know, nobody could be excellent at all of that, right? right. So everybody has their own unique ability and somebody had told me the, the the greatest analogy that's that really stuck with me. What, you know, if you look at a rocket ship when it takes off, it has that payload, and then it, as it hits certain levels, it has to let certain things go. Yeah. To to reach that next level, and I yeah. think you have to look at your business and your business career the same way. And when you do that, you're you're able to focus more on your why, like, what am I doing? You know, what was the reason that got me into this space? Right. Right. It's, and if it's, it's not solely about the dollars, right? Yeah. Most people who I know that, that are good or great at what they do, there's a, there was a drive. Yeah. There was, there was something that they wanted to improve for us. It was 
you know, I love changing things for the better. You know, we're yeah. stewards of the land. I want to make that better. I want to, I want to create a better experience for my, my resident. I want to create a better, you know, experience for the people who are there and create that value and watching that build in front of my eyes, right? Yeah. That to me is my, my canvas. And when you have that and you're able to focus on that and kind of delegate the rest, then you don't have that burnout. You're able to continue going, right? Because yes. you're focusing more on the, on what you love rather than on the stuff that you need to do to make your business go, right? right. That makes sense, especially as you, as you start to scale and get bigger. So oh, I think yeah. that, that's an important aspect. And I think where people are having this challenge, especially now is times are different, right? Inflation's up, the economy is in a, in a tough spot. And so the owners or the entrepreneurs feel like I have to do more. So you, you dig in to what you know, right? Your muscle memory of I've got to do everything. I've got to save money. Maybe I don't hire the person I need. Maybe I don't want to invest in the, in the spot I need to do it. And that creates pressure and stress. And when you do that, you make a lot more bad decisions, right? Yeah. You're trying to do too much. And at the end, you, you know, your, your product suffers. Um, and I think your, your customer suffers and, and I think you suffer the most, right? right. You're just, you're just not satisfied. And that's where people kind of burn out. Yeah. I really do think that's true. Now, when, what would be your main, you know, um, uh, solution for when you, when people are starting to go through that and they're starting to go through the burnout and they're starting to try to do too much and their, their, their product is suffering or their business is suffering, they're suffering. What's the first thing you would tell them to try to get back on track so they can start to move forward? Because it seems like they either they're, they start moving backwards or they get stuck and they plateau and the business, the expenses, like you said, everything is, is increasing they're plateaued. That means they can't afford to to move forward because they're not they're not thriving as they're supposed to. Mm. And you know, so what what would be the first thing that you say to somebody who is kind of in, in that in that situation? Well, Stacey, I, I I say this because you know, having been in business for the, the time that I've been in, you know, and I've been an entrepreneur my my entire life, been in business for myself for over twenty years. You know, everybody goes through that. So yeah. what what you're going through isn't uncommon. I'm sure we could all share stories. Um, and I could tell you from my experience, having gone through the recession from 2007 and 2010, yeah. where, and I'm in real estate, things were not moving, transactions weren't happening, you know, market values were dropping. We were doing a lot of spec work at that time. And we've got, we got stuck with some properties that we couldn't move. You know, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. Yeah. But, but you have to break it down into pieces, right? Mm, yeah. So if you look at, you know, if I'm trying to carry, you know, 15 different items, I might not be able to do that. Right. But you break it down into the small pieces, you know, what's the first step that I can do, right? What's right. the second? And if I can break that down into smaller bite-sized pieces, yeah. then I can, I can have, I could start creating those wins along the way. Yeah. that now move you forward with confidence to be able to handle some of the other challenges that you're inevitably going to face. And right. I think the challenge people have when it goes back to mindset is I have all this thing that's hitting me and I try to do everything at once. Yeah. And, and so that's where you have to break it down, kind of center yourself yeah. um, through prayer to, to, you know, and, and get an idea of where can I start and have the best impact moving forward. And then all of a sudden the pieces don't seem so challenging or daunting along the way. Right. No, I agree with you. I think, I think that's great advice. I really do. And I, I like when you were talking about real estate, because, you know, I see a, a, a change now. You see a lot of buildings coming up. You see a lot of, you know, either commercial bu bu businesses or residential businesses. And when you mentioned that you will go into these these mobile communities and, you know, and you you change things and you and you reconstruct them. I've been into mobile communities where I didn't even know they were mobile they they had knocked down, reconstructed, put different types of of uh, mobile homes in there, and you didn't even know. You thought they were real houses. You thought the com the community was so pretty. Well, it was just it was amazing. So so I think the 
you know, I've been in the space for about 10 years now. In the last three or four years, it's kind of gotten a little bit trendier. People are starting to catch on because it's still a very fragmented mom and pop industry. It is the only asset class in real estate that is not dominated by, you know, private equity firms or large family offices. So you still have that fragmented mom and pop feel to it. Yeah. So, so, but you, what we have here, and, and because they were, you know, as they went, you know, multi-generational, right? So the grandpa built it, father ran it, mother ran yeah. it, and then it comes down to the third generation. They're not true operators in the operation sense. They're more of, they've looked at this as an income stream. They haven't reinvested in the business. And in many times, communities are just tired of having something that might've been the eyesore, right, yeah. of the community. However, this addresses the number one issue we have in this country, which is the affordable housing crisis. Right. There's no more affordable affordable housing than a manufactured home. And, and you hit the nail on the head. Today, the new product that's out there, they're fantastic um, options available for the end user and they're affordable, right? right. So you can, you can buy a brand new manufactured home for 60,000, for 80,000, for 100,000 and have a beautiful three bedroom, two bath, plenty of living space. And you're not on top of everybody. Right. right? You have this, 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 you know, you have this horizontal space yeah. that you can't find in, 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 you know, an apartment building. And what we came to find, and one of the things that, that drew us in, right. Once I got involved, it kind of drew me in. You find in these communities, the resident is as equally invested invested in that community success as you are yeah because because they have their largest single asset sitting on your land and they will stay there longer as long as the place is clean and safe and they yes. want to see you be successful because it, it they don't want to move that home right they yeah. want to stay there and so so you have the ability where people are a transitory right they, they yeah. want to stay and so when you have that you have buy in from the community when you're trying to make those changes and you can really impact their lives which for us made it a win win right yeah. i've been in real estate for 20 there's a lot of different asset classes you could go to to just make money right? right but here you can have an impact on people's lives and and that's what just drove us to to you know right now we own over 20 you know we've owned and operated over 20 communities in four different states so we're you know, pretty excited about that. That's a very exciting because I know, you know, what I think is that when we first came out, people labelized them because they were an eyesore. People weren't taking care of the land. People weren't taking care of every their surroundings. And even, even the homes itself weren't as nice as they are today, you know, and now I, I see a total change. I see a change, like you said, the property is spaced out nice. You have people decorating the front of their home. They're putting little gardens. The houses, you know, the mobile houses don't look like mobile houses. They look like actually, they look like houses, you know. And you go into those communities and everything is nice. Everything's spaced out. Everybody's taking care of their spot very mm -hmm. nicely. And like I told you, I went into a couple that, you know, a couple of friends invited me over. And I didn't know that it was a mobile community. And I I I was I was stunned when I saw it because because in my head, I had that labelism in, in my head of what you know I grew up with when I was growing up as a kid, what they mm -hmm. look like and what everyone sure. said about them. And then all of a sudden you see you see a total change. And it's it's you see I need all over the place. You're seeing, you know, it's they no longer look like those mobile homes that we pictured back in the in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It, it's like completely changed. And, you know, it looks like a nice little community. And it is. You see you see nice people that are just looking for affordable housing because they can't make the, the you know, they can't afford the property tax of, you know, what what they're, you know, and the house and, and the upkeep of these big houses. And, you know, it's it's very exciting expensive even in in middle class areas like my parents live in a middle class area i think their taxes are up to 9000 you know and they have just your regular average home you know it's it's crazy how you know prices are are skyrocketing but if you can go into something like you mentioned like a mobile community and it looks so pretty and so nice and it's upkept well, well that's great especially for people that are on a fixed income they only have they're only bringing in x amount of money a month that's a great option, I think. Stacy, that and you you hit it on the head. And there's been some reports from NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors, 
which says we're we're about 4 million homes short, right? Of where we should be, which is why where rates have gone up so high over the last 18 months and we've had historic rise, we haven't seen the price drop that you normally would see when rates increase because there isn't the inventory of available stick built or traditional built homes right. available to meet the market demand. Yeah. So that is kept, think about this paradox where we right. have high prices and a high interest rate and manufactured housing offers that opportunity for people to become a homeowner, right? yeah. to still have that pride of ownership and they don't have to be a, a rental generation but without costing the same amount of money, right? Without having that same amount of impact where they're spending you know, 50 or 60% of their income to rent an apartment, yeah. they can own a home for substantially less. And when they pay off that home, then they're just staying in that community. And quite frankly, a lot of people like community living because yeah. there might be features and amenities that they, they wouldn't get if yeah. they were living by themselves. So there is a, a a huge market for people who just like to be around other people, right? Not not everybody right. wants to live on 50 acres all by themselves. Exactly. Some people, some people like to have that. So you you get kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah. And it and it is a an affordable option in today's market where you know you can meet demand at that at that price point. So that's that's a you know huge thing I think going forward. I think you're going to see a lot more of manufactured housing developments throughout the country. Um, right. Because people are starting to reimagine what those communities can be. Oh, for sure. Like I know for my son, he moved out because he needs to be closer to his work, and he he left, but he left most of his stuff here, and mm -hmm. he's paying you know quite a bit for his apartment. And I said, wait, wait. I, you, there's about you know 50 bags of stuff here and you still got your room your room is full yeah. and he's like oh my i can't fit it all in my apartment and and he's paying quite a bit for his apartment and then i have another child who's in manhattan and the shoe box the shoe boxes in manhattan manhattan start at six thousand. Mm -hmm. so it's like you know you you have to really look at the cost of today's living is, is is crazy but if you can go into something like mobile community and start off somewhere like there or even stay there because I know lots of couples have been here there for over twenty years and they're very happy. They're not, that you know, the 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 site of even moving or moving their home is not even an option because the communities are so nice. You know, sometimes you have to really think about you know you know where am I getting the most for my buck? You know, and where you know where can I be happy? You know, for me, I, I have you know I, my son left and I still have I, all his stuff. You know, he, I even have his clothes. He's like I can't fit everything in my closet. You know, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you, you want somewhere where they could have room, they could have storage, they could have a, enough of room where they can invite friends over and have, you know, nice little, you know, home parties sure. and things like that. And I think that's a great option. I really do. Yeah. I think it's it's great. And, you know, these, I'm sure these, these prices that, that are, you know, there's different sizes that you probably can get and you could probably meet a nice size for the amount of money that you're able to spend too, right? That's a, that's a great point. Yes, you can. They, they, they could start at, as, as, like I said, as low as 50 or 60,000, you could spend 200,000 and get a beautiful, beautiful home, depending on your, your budget your, your needs, your wants. So it really depends on what you're going to be looking for. Yeah. Um, but you, your price there, the manufacturer's price to build those homes are significantly less. If you're looking at a traditional stick built house, I don't care where you are in the country. Yeah. It is, it is very challenging to build right at less than $150 a square foot. Oh, right? hundred. Yes. 100%. And, and and so now you can have one of these homes delivered um, and, and their cost of construction could be anywhere from 65 to $80 a square foot. I mean, there's a huge savings just in that, Stacey. Yeah. And that gets passed on to the consumer. And, you know, like you said, you, you if your son is paying $6,000 a month or your daughter's paying $6,000 a month, that's money that they're never going to get back. Right. That's money that's going to go into the landlord's pocket. Mm -hmm. And he's paying his property tax, mortgage, or whatever the case may be. But you're not going to get that money back. Yes, you got the use of that place, but you're not building anything. Right. And I think since COVID, uh, people have kind of said, you know, reimagined where where I can work. I don't have to work in the big cities any right. longer, right? Yeah. You know, some jobs are remote. Some jobs, some are very good jobs in secondary or tertiary markets. Yeah. 
So that could help bring down your the, the price points for that younger generation who's getting started. Yeah. Um, because it's it's tough to save money if your rent is you know three to six thousand a month, right? Oh, it's, sure. it's tough if you're starting out to save money when you're when you're paying that that much money is walking out the door without a return on investment. It's just very very challenging for for that you know. I don't know if they're millennials or Gen Z or Gen X, you know, <laughs> no Gen Z, right? I don't know. I what, think it's what Gen Z. To. It's Gen I, I, Z. I, I, yeah. I don't know where we're up to yet. But, yeah, I know. Uh, it's a little confusing. <laughs> it's a little confusing. That name changes every once in a while. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's really true. And, you know, how do you save money when you have the car insurance, you have, you know, health insurance, you have, you know, you have, there's so many things, utilities, blah, 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 blah. Then you have an expensive apartment that you're, you're, you know, where do you have, you know, it's almost impossible to save enough of money, but if you could start off in, you know, or even decide to, you know, get enough of income where you can get something reasonable and live in a nice community, I think it's an amazing, you know, investment where you'll have a, a good return. Cause if you ever decide to leave, you could always sell it. It's an investment. Yes. You yes. Know? yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and that's, that's one of the things that we talk about with our residents where, you know, especially if we come into a community that maybe, you know, because there's two different, sometimes they're what they call park owned homes where the, where the community will own the homes and people will rent them out. We like to have residents own their homes. We feel that having that pride of ownership is, is a better model because one, yeah. when they own the home, they'll fix it better than we ever will. And they'll maintain it better than we ever will because they'll be there. Oh, hundred percent. Two, when they know that hey, I'm vested in this community, they're going to ensure that the culture inside that community stays. Like we're yeah. very big and one of the, you know, really the lowest cost, but highest value things we can do. And this, this goes, whether it's a community or your business, it's instilling that culture and that accountability that yeah. we're not going to allow the garbage or debris to, to accumulate in front of a home, or we're going to make sure the ditches are cleaned and the roads are paved. And the accountability is that you're going to make sure that your home and your lot is very well maintained as well. And yeah. we're going to hold each other accountable and we're going to create a community that where people want to live and, and people are going to, to want to be part of, right? Because yeah. that, that, that's the, the culture that we look to install instill in our people on the ground and make sure that our residents are feeling the same thing. And I like that idea because I remember even when I was younger, before I owned a house, you know, once I moved into my own home, it was so different. You know, I, I remember going from a, from um, living in a base, my my in laws' basement to going into my own townhouse, and the when I then from there we moved into a house. And when I first bought my first house, the, the first thing I thought to myself, it's mine. You know, it's like it's such a different feeling when you know yeah. that you own it. You could do anything, and, and you do have more respect for the home. You care about the home more because you invested everything you have into that home. You know, or you invested a good portion of your your savings into that home. So you want to make it look its best. You want to you have pride because it's it, it was you know your the finances that you saved, your hard work, all that money goes into something you know an investment. You want to make sure that that investment is, is is you make it as special as possible, and you make it you keep it in, in good care as possible because it's yours. It's your baby, and you worked hard to get it. And I think that's the key. I think that's that, the key. I mean, that is that is so key, and then you can't quantify that that pride of ownership. And that's why, you know, when you when you work and you sh strive for something, and then you accomplish that goal, I think it 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 makes you better, right? You appreciate it. You, you want to see ways where you can improve it because like you said, it is, it is yours. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's that, that pride of ownership that again, it's, it's so hard to quantify, but, but you know it when you see it and, and, you know, in doing this for 20 years, um, watching people make, take that step from being yeah. a renter to being an owner and watching how that changes their mindset. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's so, uh, impactful to me still yeah that 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 you you see people who have that pride it's still impactful to me to watch and see and and if i have a small bit in that in in changing that trajectory of that family or that family's path yeah. then um, i'm i'm glad that we were able to participate in a good way 
And I think another thing to bring up that is a great thing is that when I knew the one couple who moved into that area, they had kids and they, their kids went, they moved into a, um, a town that had one of the best, the top school systems in our state. And they would never have been able to afford to, to have their children go to that school system if they didn't live in a mobile community. And mm -hmm. their mobile, mobile community, like I was telling you, was gorgeous. And now their kids were able to go to one of the top school systems in our state because they were able to move into this community. None, none, if the houses around it outside the community were all, you know, top notch, you know, million dollar homes, they went from from 800,000 to a million point something, they would never have been able to, you know, move into that town, they would never have been able to get into that school system. But because they had a community, you know, like the mobile uh, communities that are, are kept so nice, and they have such nice homes to select from, they were able to move in there, move their children in there, they all had their own bedroom, they went to the, the they went to a really great school system and they got to mingle with a good class of kids and you know it it, it helped their family overall in many ways sure sure i mean that's listen it, that having that affordable option um is so important and i think it's we're starting to see now across the country for the first time i mean this is on average we would nationwide they close more parks than they open Right? Yeah. That is a fact, right? So so there's more communities closing than opening, but because the affordable housing need has really um, been such uh, uh, to the worth such to the forefront over the last few years, you're starting to see now new developments arise in communities where this was not happening. Um, and you're starting to see people reimagining what this space could be like. Yeah. So you know, we have found um you know, now we're in, you know, through the Sun Belt. We found that we're, you know, from, you know, Alabama straight through North Carolina. Uh, we have found that when we've entered into these communities and we've taken over, you know, some real, uh, real turnaround projects. I mean, one star communities to bring them up to three and a half, four stars, um, that the communities have been resoundingly um, positive about seeing this work being done. Yeah, it seems something is happening in maybe yeah. something that was uh, an eyesore to them before, um, and been supportive of those changes because we're investing in those communities and a lot of these communities that we're we're vested in, you know, they have a definitive need. Like we're we're in the process right now in Laurenburg, North Carolina, where we have uh, 134 lot. There was 134 space community that when we took it over only had like 64 homes in it. You're in a city that has, I mean, if an apartment's for rent, it's on, it's on the market for three days. There is zero housing availability. Nobody's built there in over 10 years. They just um, got a military contractor that's putting a plant. It's on the 74 corridor. If you're yeah. familiar with what's happening in North Carolina, it's become like the number one place in the country to do business. And they're bringing in 500 brand new jobs, but there's no place to house them. Right. So in the last year, we've spent time improving the infrastructure, redoing roads, redoing sewers, getting the infrastructure right. We've brought in 20 homes. We've got another 10 homes on its way there. And every time we bring in a home, those homes are getting filled, right? right. Because people need a place to live and it's an affordable option. And now it's in the city, which is getting all these jobs. So the town has been super supportive of the work that we've been doing because they realize there's a need. Yes. Um, and that's that's where things are kind of working, you know, symbiotically together. And it's been, you know, been a fun experience to be able to do all this. Yeah. No, it, you know what, when you're changing people's lives, it really makes a good feeling inside, you know, to know that, you know, these simple changes that you're making, they're simple on your side, but they're making traumatic changes on the other person's side. You know, you're changing someone's life, the way, you know, the, the ability to have something better in their life, the ability to live in a better area and have better things and to be proud of where they live and not be ashamed, you know, to bring their friends or family over, mm -hmm. you know, because it is an eyesore, you know, changing it. So it's not an eyesore and maybe even, you know, wiping away that stigma because mm -hmm. we have a lot of stigmatism in our society. Sure. You know, once someone labelizes something, it's very hard to get that label taken off, you know, mm -hmm. but over time, you know, 
if, if people start seeing change and they start realizing, you know, you can take the stigmatism off or you can decrease it, you know, by making changes to better a community and to better the structure of it, you know, people start to, you know, word of mouth, people start to realize, hey, you know what, it, it's not, you know, it's it's a good place to live and I get this and I do this and it's, you know, and they, and it start the, the whole trajectory of how people think start to change. And, and, you know, this, and this goes back to your initial question, right, of how having that mindset, right, or knowing, kind of knowing what your why is when you do this, um, and that becomes our, our motivating factor, like, how can we do this? How can we, you know, see, we create our vision board for each community and see what's going to happen, what our plan is, as that takes shape. Because again, these could, these communities, when you when you take this over, could seem overwhelming. There's yeah. so much work that has to be done, but oh, yeah. we break it down into smaller pieces of, hey, what's the win for the what's the win for the quarter? What's the win for the month? What's the win for the week? Right now, it doesn't seem so daunting, right? Yeah. And so it takes time to make those changes, but knowing where you want to go yeah. allows you to deal with the obstacles that are going to be in your way. Because I will tell you, and and you know, it's not smooth sailing, right? You're going to, you're going to run into some resistance along the way, whether it's, you know, with permit that doesn't come in time, a contractor that's not going to show up an unexpected event that's going to happen. I mean, this is just, that's, that's life. Yeah, right? exactly. But, but in the, and the way we handle that, right. Is, is knowing where we want to go, right. And, and taking, breaking it down into pieces of how we need to get there. So when something happens, we're not, Oh, you know, we don't seem overwhelmed yeah. or saying, Hey, we, this is just too big for us to handle because, right. you know, going back to the mindset, you know, it's, it's not, if it's not too big for you to handle, then it's not too big for me to handle. And if right. we get done, then we can do it. It's just breaking it down and figuring out the best ways to get it done. Right. And taking it into that step. So it kind of leads back to, you know, break it down, small bites, and then just just move forward there. You create value for the residents, and then our stakeholders of you know. Listen, we've been very fortunate. We, the, our stakeholders have 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 allowed us to continue on with this vision and move it forward. So it's been a, a fun ride, and we're expecting you know a lot more uh, yeah. going forward. That's awesome, you know. And and when you were saying all this, I, I the first thing that came to my mind is teamwork. You know, you're having teamwork. Without teamwork, without everybody working together, trying to build one good goal, it's impossible. It's really, like you said from the beginning, it's not, you can't do anything one person, you know, and it's it's teamwork. You know, you on your side of the board, you have all these people that want to improve people's lives by creating a community that's going to better them in many ways, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, educational wise, we can go on and on and on. And then you have people who get to buy their own mobile home and it's theirs. So they get to take care of it. They get to work to make it better. And then they, they work as a community, you know, they meet friends, they work together, you know, and it becomes a, a caring community. And then I, you know, they get to know the people outside and they get to know the people who are making it happen. And it's one big happy community and lots of great things can happen from that. And that's, that's amazing. That really thank is amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's uh, like I said, it's, we have a great team. Um, so as I talk, you know, I, I talk, I'm representing my team um, that's that's done that. We have you know, my partner and I have been in business together, you know, for for you know, just about 10 years. We've been we, we've been working together and and we've built out a team from here overseas on the ground. And, and without them, you know, I couldn't be here today talking to you. Right. right. So the fact that we've been able to assemble that uh, we've been very, very happy with with that. And, and so we're, we're constantly looking. And I think as an owner uh, of a company, you always have to look, I mean, you know, the most important things you, you do is, you know, finding and, and recruiting and retaining good talent, right. Even in, yeah. even in bad times. I mean, that is key, you know, making sure you're deploying, raising and deploying capital in the right way. Right. And making sure that people understand the vision, clearly communicating, articulating the vision and ensuring that the culture is just um, is downstream because when, when people understand the culture, the decisions they have to make are easy. When they don't understand your culture, you know, they're calling you for every little thing, right? Right. Like, what do I do about this? What do I do? But when they understand what's important to you, right? The integrity, the, the, the values that you put in, 
And they, they make decisions based off of that. And you can trust that, that your organization's being run the way it should. So right. that's, that, that's been a very key component to what we've been able to do over the last few years. That's amazing. Now, if someone's interested in this, how can they get in touch with you? How can they have, you know, how can they move forward to ha- make something like this happen in their lives? Uh, absolutely. That's a great question. So they could, they could find out more at the mhpexchange.com. That's the mhpexchange.com. That's a platform that we've created in this space. It's the largest platform for opportunity, news, education, and entertainment, right? So you have uh, some, you'll have daily articles that are happening in and around the space come, you know, populated from across the country. Some articles you might need, whether you're looking to invest, buy a home, um, or sell a home, you'll have listings that are available homes or or parks. Um, plus we have the world's first, right? So you talk about manufactured housing or the mobile home parks. We have the world's first AI agent just for, the MHP space. It's called Chat MHP. You can ask it any question you want, and it will have any answer you have um, involved in the space. I think we're the we're the first person to come out with something like this. We wow. So yeah, we're really excited about that. We did this because when we first got involved in the space, we couldn't find information. It was so fragmented. It was like going yeah. back to the library, right? <laughs> so so we created a database that has you know every park in the country available. Their street oh, wow. view. Yeah, so it's pretty robust, and I think if you go out there, it's not just for the you know the heavy investor or community owner. I think yeah. somebody who's just on the surface and wants to find out more, that's the spot for them to go. Oh, amazing! I love it. I love it. All right. So, and is there anything like if you had to give everybody before we go, maybe like everything that we discussed today, if you wanted to give them a couple of takeaways from what we discussed, some important factors you'd like to emphasize before you go. I think it's. Absolutely. One, it's mindset, right? Understanding, you know, with clarity what you're looking to do. And then, as you said, building the right team around you, right? Mm -hmm. And not, you know, sometimes you have to work in that bubble, right? And we had talked before, um, you know, there's a lot of white noise that goes around, you know, everybody, especially right now, you turn on the TV or you're on the computer and you have to kind of take out those distractions focus on what you need to focus on and then you can thrive regardless of what the environment is. Yes. And, and so if you do those things and you put those proper steps in place, I think that'll keep you healthy mentally, yeah. spiritually and financially as well. Excellent. I love it. I love it. And tell everybody one more time the website so they don't forget it. Uh, the mhpexchange.com. Love and it. If you have any questions you can you can you can follow us there or you can you could send us questions from there we'll be happy to answer them. That's amazing. I love it. Oh, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Frank, for coming on to the show today, sharing this valuable information and also sharing some great information about just self-improvement, you know, and, and helping people understand that anything in business is possible, that you can change, you know, and go into a, a positive direction just by changing our mindsets and changing our values and, and focusing on what needs to be done and not exactly looking at the whole picture at once, but breaking it down and just taking baby steps and with a positive attitude and breaking it down, creating strategies, you can move forward, no doubt, and accomplish any dream. And I love the fact that you are taking these areas and making them into better living spaces for people so they can actually own what they they purchase, feel good about themselves, and live in a community that is that is a a beautiful community and that they can be proud where they live and have the, all the benefits that go along with it. Thank you very much, Stacey. It was was an honor to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. You too.